Welcome back. About uh, two weeks ago or so, I ended a series of videos on this channel that were quick tips for backpackers. In the last tip, I asked for people to send in their favorite tips. Or in the last video, I asked for people to send in their favorite tips. And this is that video where I'm going to share the tips that were sent in from viewers. Just kind of rapid fire. I'm not going to insert graphics or anything like that. And as of this second, there's a really nice breeze that I hope is not going to get picked up on the microphone. But as soon as that stops, I'm going to get crushed by black flies. So I'm going to get right to it. And I happen to be just sitting in a place on my property in which... Uh, Something kind of famous in my life happened a couple of years ago. I was, only, I was almost scooped up by a tornado. And so as soon as I'm done with the tips, if you want to stick around and hear the story about how I was almost scooped up from a tornado in this exact spot, uh, I'm going to stop the camera, kind of turn it around, and I'll tell you the quick story of my near-death experience. All right, now for the tips. Okay, tip number one. This was sent in by Scott. And this is a pretty good one that I think I'm going to use. He said, if you normally carry like a bandana, you might as well carry one that is bright orange. And this way here, if you're out during hunting season, you can take it out. And obviously it helps flag yourself and make yourself visible to hunters. And I have a, that exact same problem where um, I'm surrounded by a state property in which there's different hunting seasons, obviously. And I never remember when one starts and one ends. And I always find myself, especially at the beginning of the year, I throw my backpack in, I, you know, just for a day hike, and all of a sudden there's hunters everywhere. And so if I can, I'll just get one of those cheap bandanas, buy it in like a fluorescent color, throw it in my backpack, it's no extra weight, and just leave it there. All right, tip number two. This is from Mark. His tip is simple. Hammocks when hiking in the woods. I love sleeping in a hammock. And if you've noticed, I've shown my hammock during gear loadouts, but I've never done a video on just sleeping in a hammock because I just feel like I still have so much to learn and I am, I am just not qualified yet, even though it's been, I don't know, two or three years of sleeping in hammocks. Not in the winter time. Um, I've only gone down to the 20s, uh, but at all other times of the season of the year, love camping, I love sleeping in hammocks. It is so, what a better night's rest than sleeping in a tent. And for those of you that watch the backpack video, the goats are back. So hopefully they won't knock over the tripod. Get. Um, all right, tip number three. This is from Hamish, I believe is how you pronounce it. And they said, first of all, pack a, ugh, sorry. Go. Yes. Here, if you don't believe me, there's a couple. All right. Now that we are almost goat free. So. Hamish suggested to make sure that you pack out your toilet paper and use a bidet. And if you've spent more than a couple of videos on this channel, you know that I am a big supporter of using a bidet and have a bunch of videos on that on the channel, which have actually, for my little channel, they've become quite popular since this whole COVID thing started as people are running out of toilet paper and looking for uh, bidets. Uh, the second tip was drill three holes in the top of a smart water bottle cap and use it for a trail shower. And while I've never done that, I do use my bidet for the same purpose in the summertime. And it is just, it's awesome. And if you don't have a bidet and you're not into that sort of thing, doing that, doing the drilling the holes, uh, and uh, they suggested three one millimeter holes on the top. It is such a great way to end the day instead of going to bed all sticky and sweaty. And I'm a sweater man. And I don't know if it's just from the, all the salt that's stuck to me, but just rinsing that off is, is awesome. And last but not least, if it looks, if they look like they're going to get condensation, they put a rain jacket over the toe box when they're in their tents. Good idea. All right. This is number four from Andy. Um, and it's basically, if you are going to be in a spot where you're going to have sketchy service to download and take screenshots of your maps ahead of time. And I kind of, there's a video out there in which someone kind of questioned, um, I don't know, we went back and forth about cell phones and they kind of said, well, you have to bring a cell phone because you need all of your maps and you have to be hooked up to data and, and the whole bit. What are you going to do if you don't have it? And I know like, for example, Google Maps, you can download all the maps and you don't need Wi-Fi. Um, you can take screenshots of where you're going to be. And so that's what I do beforehand instead of trying to always hook up and always make sure I have a connection. And this way I don't ever have to worry about it. 
Uh, tip number five. Here's a bunch of them from Chuck. And he said that these are aimed more at through hikers. Uh, first one is start training as soon as you decide that you're going to make the attempt. The earlier the better. Lose the weight and get in shape before you get on the trail. I have a couple of years ago, I was watching all sorts of like, you know, I'm going on the Appalachian Trail through hike sort of videos. And I was shocked by how many of them said, I'm going to use the trip to lose the weight, or I'm going to just use the trip to get in shape. And that's just not how it works. And maybe that's why 75% of the people who start don't finish, but your body, well, no lecture. Uh, good one, Chuck. Uh, the second one is decide on the footwear that you'll be hiking in and wear out the first pier while you are training at home. I was kind of thinking about this in my head as I was walking down here. And I think there's really two pieces of gear that you need a lot of experience with. And that is your boots or your shoes and your backpack. Because both of those, you know, I think are both things that you just don't throw on and go. Um, especially with shoes, different shoes can give you hot spots in different places. Um, and the same goes with a backpack. So good advice, Chuck. Uh, and number three, once on trail, or the third piece of advice from Chuck, once on the trail, establish routines like drinking plenty of water and snacking through the day. Yes. Those folks who like kind of eat breakfast and then they kind of like plan on a snack stop, like, you know, two or three hours and they plan on one instead of just like eating as you go and starting in that routine of constantly replenishing your body with water and snacks. Good one, Chuck. And uh, last one, but not least is watch Paul's backpacking tips one through 20. Thanks Chuck for the plug. All right. This is tip number six. My tip, this is from Poco Loco. My tip is to always cut your toenails before hikes. Yes. Nothing more to say about that one. Uh, and the last one is from Dawn. And this is a good one to finish on. And I'll read it exactly what, what she wrote. And it's, she basically says her favorite backpacking tip is just go. You don't have to have the perfect gear. You don't have to have the ultralight weight gear. It's still fun and you can learn what will work best as you go. As long as you have what you need to stay warm, dry, and fed, get out there. And that is the best advice to end this video with. So there you go. There's some tips from viewers. And if you stick around, I will share the story of my near-death experience from the hurricane. All right, so here's the quick tornado story. My house is in a straight line. If you were like just to follow like what you're looking at right now in the video and went straight through the woods, you would hit my house, I don't know, maybe about uh, 200 yards from where I'm standing or so. And so one day I came home last year, it was almost two years to the date. It was the second or third week in May. I looked at the radar, saw that I had about 45 minutes before the storms came and I took my dog for a walk. So I have a trail that goes along the edge of my property. I don't know if you can see, there's a fence right there and goes along the edge of my property. And I was as far back, way back there in that corner when all of a sudden I started to hear this huge, huge like amount of wind. The only thing though was that the trees looked exactly like they do today. There was not a leaf moving, no branches moving, even though I can hear intense, intense wind and trees getting blown around. And about a half a second later, that's when I heard that sound that is still stuck in my head, the sound of the train coming, which is the sound of a tornado. And so I had only been about 10 minutes into my hike, so it had, it had decided to come a lot quicker than 45 minutes. And that is when I decided to just sprint to the house. And I sprinted straight up through this trail and straight up where you see that clearing. The only problem was when I was sprinting two years ago, there was no clearing. I don't know if you can kind of see this lane <laughs> that kind of ends with these trees right here that are, are knocked over, but there were all trees, all that should have been right now in the video. You can kind of see there's one big one still there. I burn wood. Uh, in my house. So I've cut them all up for firewood and have burned them over the last couple of years uh, and they're stacked up. But as I was running, all of these trees <laughs> were falling around me. I had just happened to pick the path of this like wisp of the tornado that came off of the edge of it. The edge of it was actually in the property next to me and came right through my property and it knocked over about 20 trees all in a perfect straight line. And I finally, after making it through the trees falling down, I did make it up to, I don't know if you can see it, there's a pasture up there 
and I made it into the pasture. That pasture is a, that pasture right there is about an acre big. Uh, I made it to the bottom of it and I almost just, I was so exhausted, I almost laid in the middle of it. But then I figured it'd be like a cartoon and I'd be scooped up. So I did actually end up making it up to the house and into the basement. But uh, yeah, that was my near death experience with a tornado. It's kind of ironic that the path that I picked that was the shortest from where I was to the pasture and to the house is also the same exact path that some wisp of uh, ridiculous wind came off the tornado and knocked down all the trees. There you go, my near-death story with a tornado.